going to give you guys an update on how it's going with making the brackets. Uh, this is really hard, man. Uh, obviously, we're adapting a Japanese transaxle to a, I don't know, I'm touching the car to a German rabbit here, German car. But that said, nothing really aligns, and if it does, things don't make sense. So this is a top bracket. What I'm trying to do is use a lot of the OEM and stock uh, brackets and marry them to each other. So this is the stock top Prius bracket, and this is where the top VW transmission would have hung off of. As you can see that it's opposite what we need. The transmission is higher than the car bracket, chassis bracket. So that presents a problem for us because how do we hang the transmission off of that? So what I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is sort of eliminate this bracket. And what you can see here is I extended these bolts. These bolts are usually like maybe two inch and these right here are probably like five inch. I got these bolts off of uh, Nissan uh, air conditioning units because the air conditioning units are obviously thicker. So let me show you sort of the general idea of what we're going for. So this cardboard represents a piece of metal that's probably 3 16ths thick. It's actually going to be much bigger than this uh, cardboard, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna make it hang like this on the side of the transmission. And then that will allow us to make some bracing that goes between a bracket that's rubber mounted here and attaches to that extended side plate, if you will. That will make the transmission mount much lower than this place. It's going to sit down there and then the transmission will sort of hang. It's pretty complex stuff for me anyway. It's uh, pretty tough. It's a, this is a tough conversion. Here I am slowly stepping up the drill bits, making the side plate for the passenger side of the transmission. I'm hoping to have six total bolts holding this up. These are not the bolts that, size bolts that hold up the bracket. So these are just holding the side of the transmission, the side of the case. So there's a bunch of them and they're really not designed to bear the weight of the transmission, but we'll see how this works out. And I hope that six will be enough. So I just need to keep drilling, slowly going to a bigger size. I'm trying to be as precise as I can on this. I think this part's really important. All right, guys, here's our piece for the side mount. It's huge. It's like eight by 15 but it's gotta be what it's gotta be. We can always trim it a little bit more to shape of the transmission. I'm gonna hang it on these six bolts. So we'll see how it fits. Let's see how good I am at transferring bolt holes. Wish me luck. All right, so let me show you what's going on here. First of all, here's what I'm doing. I replaced the one and a quarter inch. I know these are in millimillies, but I'm just using standard sizes here for reference. So inch and a quarter replaced by what were these four and a quarter um, and uh, i'm gonna do one here on camera just to show off my skill ability so there it is that's what we're doing we're putting this plate now don't worry these dinky bolts aren't going to be the only thing holding this in place okay and yes, there's a little bit of offset there, maybe a quarter inch behind. Well, that thing is in the butt is the oil pump actually for the transmission, the mechanical oil pump. So what I have here is some tubing and we're going to cut two and a half inch spacers out of this. And we're going to reinforce our bolts with these spacers like so. Got an orange cable there fighting me, of course. So yeah, we're gonna go with some spacers and they're going to be welded to the plate. And then in addition to the spacers, we're going to use this strip of metal cut into maybe, I don't know, four inch slithers or more. And this is going to 
let's connect our spacers like so in between the bolts. It should look pretty slick. Well, it's gonna look terrible, but I think it's gonna function. But I am just so happy that I landed these holes. Uh, my son helped me with blue tape and some ha hammering, hammering. Can't even speak right. So hopefully I can pull this off for today. I'm gonna put these all the way in just for my own sanity. This, these bolts actually have a little bit of a shoulder. So I'm glad I went a little bit bigger on the holes. Not much, but I didn't know about that shoulder. So I drilled the holes a little bit bigger to give me some wiggability. And it turns out it was the right move. So man, this is going to be great. That's going to be great. Similar concept on this side. Hey, I'm back to my Oreo cookie design. Those of you who follow my truck build, I always have crazy names for my uh, methods to my badness, my designs, and here we go again. Imagine an Oreo cookie with the transaxle being the white stuff in the middle. So here we are at the Spacer manufacturing facility. I've made six of these, seven actually. The first one was just kind of experimental. Um, the saw is wonderful. It's great. Couple little issues like, for example, if you give yourself a stopper, cause you know, you're a perfectionist here at Good Enough Garage. That way you just push in the piece and you chop suey it to size, right? You don't have to measure each time. Well, can you spot the problem here when we, use this thing to come down on it. This thing, this thing can only hit that. Now I could have been smart and gave myself a skinny stopper here, something like maybe a quarter inch, eighth of an inch. But you know, I did what I, what first came to mind and that's what the socket was for. So then the socket went here, extended a little bit and I'm teaching you how to make spacers. That's not the point of this video. Sorry about that, guys. Anyway, I made six of these and those that process was fairly quickly. Now I need to deburr them. So you use this kind of twisty turny deburr tool. I can't do it left-handed, although I will be a bit direct stressed, left-handed and right-handed, as you say. By the time I'm done with this project, I swear it. So let me deburr them and then check back with you when I put them on the uh, transaxle. And I need to stop saying uh, uh all the time I noticed. Okay, so I wanna show you guys how this is gonna work. This is basically the long bolt and the spacer and I'm gonna sandwich it in here. This is the sixth one, it's essentially the celebratory one that I just stage and do on camera to show you guys what a genius I am. Okay, I am the most happy with this bracket so far. It is the third one I'm doing, so I have a little bit momentum, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not too thrilled with the other two. One thing I'm doing here is allowing myself to make mistakes and not uh, fretting about that. And I will be perfectly fine with having to redo anything that needs redoing. So the challenge is I don't have a hoist. And even if I had a hoist, I can lift things up and down, but then I need to make it, you know, be this way and that way and then this way and that way and I don't have any of that apparatus and even if I did it'd still probably be off because my garage floor slants forward right for the water runoff I'm not compensating for that the car may be leaning to one side who knows but so there it is this is going to be pretty good it's not going to stay a rectangle, you know, we're gonna shape it somehow and probably have to do a cutout here for the uh, cup holders. This is what I'm calling cup holders. This is the CV axle 
female ends, if you will. This goes inside of the axle back there. And we obviously really need to make room for it so where this can fit and turn. So these are off of this transmission. They're off because they were never on it. I didn't, I didn't purchase it with the cups, if you will. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm gonna move on to this part. Okay, so let's talk about this side. This is the OEM Prius bracket that was bolted to the side rail here. Uh, as I hope you guys can see it there. And it's just too low, it's lower than the transmission. So it would have to be not only higher, but moved over. So, and then it would bolt on there type of deal. What we're gonna do is, this is two pieces, it's rubber mounted. First, we're going to divorce these two, and then we're gonna flip this script. We're gonna reverse it this way and make this rubber part drop in here. And then we're gonna make a plate. We could weld to this, but it would make extractability much more difficult. So we're gonna use another 316 inch plate similar to that. Well, exact same thickness, way smaller. We're gonna bolt it onto here, and then we're going to run some sort of uh, trusses, square tubing, piping would be ideal, but I don't think I have any in my uh, shed of stuff. So anyway, let me separate these two and get back to you guys. Okay guys, I apologize if I'm out of breath, I'm running back and forth from toolbox to toolbox, impact wrench to impact wrench. So here's the bracket. Hopefully it's on camera and here it is separated. This part went on there. And then this part went like this inside there. This is rubber bushed. We don't need that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna fit this in here. Now this requires a little bit of trimming of these sides that protrude out a tad, that is not a big deal. I am going to go and uh, cut these off a little and come back when we can fit it back in here. So I want to bring you in here and show you how the third generation Prius transaxle is now mounted in the 1984 Volkswagen Rabbit. And why are we converting to electric? Well, electric cars have instant torque. I mean, look at this thing. It's not even on. Look at that. Look at the power of that torque. Vroom, vroom. On a more serious note. I'm pretty proud of this because I'm using a stock Volkswagen chassis mount here with a stock Prius mount. Now this is on the passenger side in this car, but that mount is actually identical to this one, which is the stock Prius driver side mount. I kind of uh, flipped them around and I made these plates on this side. We have a plate here obviously going to the uh, bell housing. It's supported with four bolts. And then you can notice here, I had to do a cutout for the uh, CV axle, but it's in there now on two mounts. It's going to have a total of four. Let me show you this side, similar concept. So this side is mounted with six bolts there's also a cutout here for that cv axle and 
it will be supported in the end with a total of four mounts. One on the left, one on the right, as you see here, plus one in the front here, and another one in the back here. And all of this will be rubber mounted. So yeah, pretty happy with it. It's in there. It's it's a very difficult process. This this build is difficult. If I had to rate it, you know, uh, I'm an expert now, having done one and a half EV conversions, right? But seriously, guys, this is this is pretty tricky. Welding is a must. You got to do some fabricating and cutting and grinding and cussing. You know the drill.